Sage Brocklebank is a tall drink of water coming in at six foot five, vegetarian since birth, a lover of people, community, arts, nature. Uh, but you probably best know him as junior detective Buzz McNabb from the television show Psych. Uh, Sage has been acting, directing, and mentoring other actors for many, many years now. He's also a, a personal friend of mine, and I wanted to bring him on today because one of the things that when I think of Sage, I think of a kind person who's interested in the welfare of others. So I wanted to bring him on today just to talk about how we can share humanity during this crazy time. Uh, so Sage, thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Tyler. Thrilled to be here. Thrilled to be here. And um, yeah, so some of the things that are, that are present for me right now um, is, you know, we're in a, a, a very funky situation right now that is a global pandemic and there's a, there's a virus that's going around the world and, uh, and there's a lot we don't know. And uh, because of we're trying to figure out how to solve this problem, we're, we're being asked to stay at home and we're being asked to, uh, to keep our distance from other people, six feet apart, social distancing. And, um, and so one of the things that I, that I think sometimes gets lost in that for people is, uh, is that I may have the virus and you may have the virus. And so if we cross each other in a trail or on the street, um, just because I might have the virus or you have the virus doesn't mean that I can't see you and I can't connect with you as a human being. And so I, th I think there's still a, a, an opportunity to see you and acknowledge you and share a part of my humanity because we're all in this together. And I think that's a really important thing. And I know that uh, a lot of people are feeling a lot of anxiety and unrest and, I think a big part of that is feeling not connected to other people. So um, now, tech, now is the time where technology does really come in, uh, come in handy. Uh, you know, this we're on Zoom. It's an amazing platform. There's Skype. There's FaceTime. Um, but having an opportunity to connect with people that you love or care about uh, makes a big difference in 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 solving this. And so I think it's really it's really important to find ways to connect with other people. Um, and just say hello and let them know that you care because I know that it makes a big difference for me and for a lot of people. Um, yeah, I mean. So Sage, a lot of kids are, are really connected. I mean, they're way more connected than I am. They're on their phones all the time. They're texting, they're messaging, they're, they're getting into group chats. But I know, especially with younger children, you know, I have a six year old and she's yeah. not on a phone all day long and mm -hmm. she's feeling you know, she misses her, her classmate, she misses her, her teacher, and she's feeling really, you know, anxious and, and isolated. Uh, do you have yeah. any ideas for, for kids that are stuck at home but don't, aren't, aren't as used to using technology? Are there other ways to reach out and be social? Well, I mean, I think there's still always an opportunity to reach out. Like you could, you could write a handwritten letter you could, you could draw a picture to send to someone. You could schedule a call or a FaceTime or something for like the next day or a couple of days later. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of getting out into nature. Like I think it's so important to, to go for a walk in nature. And I know like here in, in Vancouver, Canada, where I live, they just outlawed most of the parks. So uh, things are a little different now. I think you can still go on some like public beaches and and whatnot but but every day I've been going for bicycle rides and walks and jogs in nature and I I really do think that just getting out in nature and putting your focus on objects outside of yourself makes a big difference and um, and I guess there is a world where potentially kids could see each other from a distance you know if you could see your neighbor from your driveway to their driveway and wave and, and have some and uh, and I know it might not be the ideal solution, but I, I do think it makes a big difference to have yeah, that. For yeah. sure. And, and my kids absolutely are doing that. They're visiting over the fence. They're riding, going on bike rides with their friends on opposite sides of the street. You yeah, know, they're, yeah. they're being creative. And okay. so that, there are opportunities. Now, we do live in a crazy world right now. This isn't going to last forever. But I thought of you for this show because you have a lot of experience with uncertainty just because of your profession. In, in yeah. the movie business, in, in television, there's a lot of uncertainty. What are some tips or, or strategies that you've used for the last 10, 20 years in just dealing with an uncertain world, not knowing what the future has? How, how do you keep from just crawling up in a ball and, and staying in your room all day? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. And so I think what it really comes down to is, 
is determining one, what things make you feel fulfilled and give you joy in your life and like what things are going to make a difference for you. Uh, and then two is having goals that are achievable and you control all of the circumstances. And so uh, a couple of examples for me is I take a tremendous amount of joy out of like riding my bicycle with music and uh, usually hands free. There's a couple of areas in my neighborhood where uh, where I just, there's like a beautiful view of Vancouver and I love that being on the trails. I've been going for night bike rides, um, you know, hikes in nature, snowboarding. I love, I'm considering, uh, driving up to the mountain and hiking for a couple hours next week and, and doing that. Uh, and then in terms of goals, like having little projects that you can chip away at and you can say like, this is something that I'm going to do. So I suspected it might go on for a while. I, um, I purchased like a 17 foot RV trailer and I got it in the backyard and I'm going to, uh, to pull out all the innards of it and build a sauna in this trailer. And, uh, and it'll take a long time. And I don't know if I'll, uh, I'm hoping that I don't get it finished while we're in this pandemic. Cause that means the pandemic would be going for a long time. Um, but having little projects. And so, uh, you know, if you're a kid, you can have a little project in the backyard that you're like, oh, I'm going to build a little garden and I'm going to get these little plants and I'm going to work on this or having like an art project where you're going to create a whole, you know, painting or uh, with pottery or like little projects that you can chip away at day by day because um, it's those small incremental gains on a daily basis that that uh, that have people feeling like fulfilled and like like they're making progress on things. And I think if you don't have a, a clear articulated goal of something that you want to create, with kids, you can start with really little projects, you know, doing some creative writing or doing an art yeah. project, getting out in nature. But one of the things that I love about you, Sage, is you're always working on some sort of project. And I, I wonder if you could just talk for a little bit. Obviously, kids, most of these kids aren't going to grow up to be actors. But I love the, the project that you've did, done that was actually called Fulfilling Young Artists. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, so Fulfilling Young Artists is a, is a nonprofit volunteer-based mentorship program where um, we pair 20 young actors and 20 experienced professionals with each other for six months of guidance and mentoring, and it works towards an original creation of work. And so the whole focus of the program is on finding fulfillment and what that means to you as an individual, and in that the key to that is intangible goals that have to do with your, that you control the outcome. And so the program culminates in an evening of unique works where every young artist has, has been tasked with answering the question, if you had a microphone and you're in front of the world, what would you say? And, uh, and they have to create a piece of art that's one to five minutes. It could be a teaser for a movie they wanna make. Like they can kind of do whatever they want. Um, by the way, all of those are excellent things that kids could do right now. They could come up with all those things. And um, what's great about movie making is that movie making is um, obviously like there's the scenes between actors where you're touching each other. But aside from that, it's an art where you could divide up all the, all the things and kids could make a movie and they could shoot a piece and then they could send a piece to their neighbor and they could shoot a piece and then you could have an editor that could edit it. So you could like there's, there's possibility of film projects coming together and being made where everyone is in the project and yet they're not touching each other. So those, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, so this program, Fulfilling an Artist, culminates you know, after six months in an original evening of unique works. And, uh, and what we really focus on is, is what goals do you have for yourself that will make a difference in your fulfillment? And um, so we focus on the different areas of being an actor, like the audition and work-life balance, how to sustain yourself when you're not acting. and uh, I guess that question is an important question right now because right. You know, that, no one is acting right now. That's exactly why I thought of this. You know, yeah. when you're helping and, and Sage now has mentored and helped hundreds of actors and he yeah. does, does it for free because he has this awesome project and, and he's working on it and, and helping people out. I suspect it's fulfilling for you to have yeah. that role as a mentor. Um, but it's really cool because right now is a time where, this is a perfect time to set goals, to start looking at what gives you the most uh, fulfillment in your own life and, and moving forward. So uh, I love that you've been doing this for so many years, Sage, and, and it's perfect for what we're going through right now. Um, mm -hmm. 
we Thanks. started by talking about sharing uh, humanity. And, yeah. and you, you mentioned, you know, you don't need to scallop people on the street and things like that. Are there opportunities right now for kids to reach out and really uplift other people? What would be your advice to them during this time as, as far as actually sharing and uplifting others? Well, I mean, so what, what pops up for me is the idea of uh, a bunch of kids collaborating on a project where they each got to say three or four things that they want to tell the world or that they want to tell their teacher or that they want to tell the other kids at the school and that there could be a video project with a bunch of kids saying like, this is what I think is great about the world and this is what I want to see in our future because there's this, we're at like this amazing tipping point mm -hmm. where the world as we know has stopped and then the world's going to begin again, but we could begin it in a, in a bunch of different ways. So, I mean, we have the opportunity to listen to what the kids think, like how should we make it different? What could we do that would make it a better planet when we start up again? What sort of practices could we implement and what, um, what things would have people feel more connected, more acknowledged, um, what would have the society, like, because we've been in a, a pretty capitalist society, I guess, in North America. And then this move to shut down the world is really more of like a socialist move. And, uh, and it's great, right? It's about the health and well-being of all people and about saving lives. And so moving forward, uh, you know, what do you think would be great? Like, what could we try doing? And so having like a project like that, or it could just be reaching out to one person in your life a day or a week that, that you haven't been connected to recently that you'd, you'd like to reach out. And you could be a phone call, it could be yelling over the fence, it could be a letter, an email, or, um, but some way of connecting with other people, I think. Now, when you do these things like fulfilling young artists or gutting an RV in your backyard, or and I know you've done tons of other projects, are you doing it because someone told you to do it, because your teacher assigned it to you, or your mom called you up and said, hey, Sage, you need to get busy and do something with your life. You should gut an RV. Well, why are you doing these things? I'm, I'm doing it because I, cause I, I, get, I love it. <laughs> I like, because I'm, I'm uh, I mean, I like solving problems and, uh, and sometimes I don't have the answer to the problem, and and uh, but I know that there's something there, and so I need to get in action. And so, like I know that when I sit at home, and I'm not in action, I I can tend to feel powerless and you know and get anxiety. And so I know if I if I give myself a task or a problem that I want to solve, or um, I had an amazing counselor that that said to me one time, he said, he said two things that I, that I still use all the time. He said, one, I'd move from judgment to curiosity. Okay. Like, and that shift as a human being from, from switching from judging someone else to being curious about them is immensely valuable and uh, just so helpful. Uh, and then the second thing he said, he said, if you're looking for something to do, start with a complaint you have about the world and then figure out what like how you could solve it. So if you have a complaint about things that you don't like the way they are, then like, how could they be? What could you create to solve that? You know, start with that place that you're, you know, if you're stuck, start with that, embrace the stuck. Like I'm so stuck at this thing I don't like and then figure out how can you change it and shift it. And, um, and I think just the, the, you know, the ability to figure things out is a very satisfying thing for a human being. And, um, and you know, becoming immersed in a task, uh, time goes by. Like all the studies on on depression, always correlate to people like being uh, focused on self as opposed to being connected to others. And so, um, you know, giving yourself a task that's outside of yourself that involves another human being and like making a difference for them. And uh, you know, one thing that might be helpful is thinking like, who in my life needs help right now? And how could I help them? Is there a way that I could help them, you know, using social distance and, you know, could I go get groceries for someone else? Could I, is there something I could do or something they need at their house that I could get or help, you know, create for them? So there's all these wonderful opportunities um, while we're at home. Cool. So the thing that's, that's present for me uh, right now is that um, like, this is a time where, where there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going on in the world. And uh, we're getting new information every day about this, uh, this virus. Are we, but this is a time where, there's a, where it seems like there's a lot of uncertainty in the world about what's going on because this is this virus going around. And, uh, 
the things that we're allowed to do and not allowed to do change on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, and I think something that's really important to, to, to remember and, and hold in this time is that we're all doing our best, you know, that everyone you see is doing their best. And, um, and, 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 and I think it's not helpful because there's a lot of shaming that's going on on social media about people's best. And I think that it's important to remember that like that's their best and I'm doing my best and all I can really do is do my best. And I can inform you about what I know about, you know, practices of being healthy. Um, and I, I just think that the, uh, the shaming on, on social media can be really toxic and dangerous. Well, is doing their best and I'm doing my best. And that's all we have really, you know? Yeah. yeah. Good advice. Thanks. Sage. Yeah. Thanks for coming on Sage. We appreciate all your words. Do you have any final advice or final words uh, to the kids watching this? Well, I mean, I'll just say what, 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 uh, what I've been doing that's been helpful for me this year is uh, my mantra this year is uh, approaching life with joy and curiosity and, uh, and, and loving with reckless abandon and uh, yeah, finding, you know, one or two things each day that will bring my joy and finding a way to like permeate other people with joy like can i can i give them an infectious smile can i can i do that and um and that has me feeling fulfilled and um and has me feeling like things are worthwhile so i think that's you know like what would make this day a win for me might be a good question to ask at the beginning of the day like what could i accomplish if there's one thing that would make today success for me and then doing it or starting it you know awesome. yeah thanks yeah. sage um thanks. Great. If people want to learn more about you or, or what you're up to, is there a best place to go? Uh, well, I have a wonderful website that you created, uh, savebrockelbank.com. <laughs> and, uh, and then the mentorship program is fulfillingyoungartists.com. And um, yeah, those are the two main ones that uh, would kind of give me info on who I am. Perfect. Thanks a lot, yeah. Sage. Thanks, Tyler. Awesome, man. Great connection.